Those are a bunch of sharing permutations. There's one more I'm going to show you real quick. If I go back to my uh, sites.google.com, this, this cumbersome uh, uh, URL, um, and I want to, say, have that particular uh, survey uh, web sheet inserted into this area right here, I could uh, edit my page and place my cursor at the insertion point that I wanted. And then I would use a gadget, uh, the spreadsheet gadget. And it would give me a list of my spreadsheets, which include Coffee Survey, which I just created. And it gives me the opportunity to uh, you know, change around um, uh, some of the parameters for how it's displayed, but I'll just accept the defaults. And so now I have my coffee, my Google Spreadsheet Coffee Survey gadget set up. I can press Save. And here it is. Like I can see, uh, you know, this, this particular, uh, this, this spreadsheet that I just created. And again, once again, this, uh, uh, this uh, information updates in real time right on the web page. Um, so, you know, Google Apps makes it really easy to, you know, create this dynamic information, share it, flow it all over the place, and, and display changes of it in real time. So I actually just skipped through a bunch of things much more quickly than I was hoping to, but please go ahead and, and let's, let's do some questions before we, we hit our last section. Okay, a uh, question from the chat room. If you embed a Google Doc or a spreadsheet on your site, who gets the hits? Is it, his, is it your site or is it Google? Who gets the hits? Is it your site or is it Google? Well, I'm not sure I really understand the question because Google is hosting your site. Um, so in order for to post these, you, it has to be Google hosting the site. Well, I mean, that, that's, that's how Google Sites works. Okay, okay, let, let me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm thinking purely in the context of Google Sites. So let's say that, um, you know, I have my WordPress blog and I want to uh, have... Uh, uh, embedded version of this spreadsheet. Um, what will happen is if somebody goes to my blog, they'll certainly see my spreadsheet and they'll, they'll also see my web page. And my web page will be hit. And so if I look at my analytics provider, which in this case is Google Analytics, I will see that my web page, which is hosted at godaddy.com, has been hit. Uh, there has been a page view. Um, but the data that's being flowed into that web page from the Google document is coming from uh, Google because Google is hosting uh, the document itself. So I would be hit and Google would be hit. We would both, you know, in our respective analytics uh, frameworks, re receive a click if that's how I did it. Does that answer the question? I believe yes, I believe it does. I have a question from the chat room as well. Um, can you make the form responses? I mean, if you're if you're publishing the results, is it possible to make the form responsible responses anonymous? Absolutely, and I should also say that um, by default, the form responses are anonymous. So if I click on uh, Edit Form, um, uh, there's this check mark box that says automatically collect respondents' coffee kooks username. Um, so I have, you know, I, I can uncheck this and it will not, uh, you know, if, I, if this is unchecked, then my survey responses uh, will not have individual names uh, attached to them. Uh, I, I just, as a matter of course, as somebody with a direct marketing background, uh, definitely want everybody's names. Uh, it could uh, deal with a situation like, um, you know, if somebody were to enter in their, uh, were have to enter in their response more than once. So, for example, Bob at coffeekooks.com from Park Count uh, must have clicked his submit button twice uh, because I can see, um, you know, two different records for him. If I didn't have his name in there, then it might look like two different people for me, which, you know, if I'm analyzing this information, that could be problematic. Um, but, you know, if I, if I wanted simply to uh, just post the results, um, you know, on a line-by-line -line basis without, taking, without having people's uh, names in them, I could very easily just make a copy of the Google spreadsheet and delete all the names and then share that copy. Now the difference would be that you wouldn't get the automatic updating, um, but you know you would have the anonymity and all that. Um, well, can, so, can, yes.
can you embed just the uh, just just a graph or a chart fr resulting from the uh, spreadsheet? Yes. So the way the way this works, um, you know, there there is a uh, a different uh, approach depending on whether you're in Google Sites versus uh, whether you are just embedding uh, hypertext into a, a normal web page uh, so that isn't hosted on Google Sites. So let's look at Google Sites. Um, I'll just click enter to give myself a little space here. If I want to, I can, um, I, I can insert a chart. So if I go down here to More Gadgets, and uh, I want to uh, insert a chart. Um, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I haven't prepared to do this specific thing, so I'm probably not going to pick the best possible chart. But let's just click on a you know an area chart here. Uh, this is the gadget for the official Google Aerial ch Area chart. So uh, here I would need to uh, you know paste information about the data source. Um, and uh, you know, I could, I could use the you know coffee source coffee survey data, um, you know. And I, I mean, let's go. Let's just go ahead and do this. Um, I'll publish as a. Actually, no, I want to. I'm going to click my uh, URL here. I'll enter that information there, and let's see if it automatically updates. Well, um, it. Uh, it doesn't, well, yeah, there you go. I mean, it's not a pretty chart, but uh, this gadget managed to read uh, my uh, uh, coffee survey data, and I'd probably, I definitely have to go back and, you know, fix that up. But, you know, this is sort of the gadget approach to uh, inserting a chart inside of a Google site, and that's actually how you would need to do it if you wanted your chart inside a Google site. You need to use the gadget from the insert menu. Uh, if I created a chart um, you know, let's just say I'll just highlight this information and, you know, insert a chart. And uh, again, this is just a really nasty, ugly looking chart. But we'll go with it because uh, I wasn't, uh, wasn't necessarily prepared to do it. Uh, I can click on chart and then I can publish the chart individually. So if, if I, I have my chart uh, highlighted right now, um, and I can publish the chart. I can move it to its own sheet. You know, here's the here's the you, here's the uh, HTML code for the dynamic object uh, that contains the chart. So I could just take this HTML and again put it on my blog uh, or any other place I wanted to to share it. And in that case, people would only see the chart. Uh, they wouldn't necessarily see uh, the rest of the data. Although I don't. Uh, we, I, I could I could go on, but uh, does that does that give you an answer? Yes. Generally, okay. we have a, another question from the uh, in-house audience. Um, Michael, I'm just curious for the to try to preserve the integrity of the polls or, or surveys. Can you limit one response per IP or one per email address? Yeah, um, I don't believe that. Uh, certainly not in the functionality of um, of. Uh, the, the 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 forms that we're using right here I don't you don't have that option um, you that's this is one of the reasons why it's it's it, it's a you know important to uh, uh, you know have the username specified because if you do have the username specified then you could you know take the first or take the last of the, of the survey depending on you know whichever one you wanted to take um, but in terms of certainly not at the IP address level. Um, you know, at the user account level, um, I think that you, uh, you you can you can set it up so that uh, you allow users to edit their responses or not. Um, but even if this is unchecked, I think it'll just keep submitting uh, repetitive responses. So I think this is just a challenge for the you know data analyst or or munger to figure out how to you know uh, apply whatever whatever rule for limiting. Uh, the number of records in the database that seems most appropriate. So that is a long way of saying no. 